Um, I could talk a little bit about why I say episode zero um, for the folks that have been following along as we recorded episode one some time ago. Uh, but before I get into that story, I want to introduce the guest and co-founder of Perfect Time in Multisport, my guy, Roy James. How's everyone doing today? <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, I'm really good. <laughs> nah, but uh, so a little bit more context about why I say episode 000 is because we had to take a step back in order to get forward. Uh, what does that mean? If folks were following along a few months ago, pre-COVID, well, right in the, as the beginning of COVID times, I uh, voted in Kate um, from On Your Movement and Matt Moore from uh, District Cycle Works to give a, uh, to talk about around the topic of how to stay active during COVID. Um, as we know, the world has been changing a lot. Uh, and I voted in the co-founder for Perfect Time in Multisport as I recognize some of those changes and some of my uh, my areas of improvement. So wanted to make sure I, I brought in the people that was uh, that believed in what I was trying to build and make sure I'm supporting them and what they're trying to build. So that's a lot of context. You probably don't care about that, but hey, you're here for it. So to talk about, again, perfect time in multi-sport, the foundation of what it's supposed to be is those storytelling pieces, right? And we want to make sure we're telling stories of athletes um, and tri well, in particular triathletes in this space about how they got, how they are getting through whatever they're getting through uh, mentally to, and using athletics as a resource to get through those difficult times, all right? Um, as you, once you get through that other side, you realize that it was the perfect time to be in the space that you were in. Okay, so again, that's the foundation of Perfect Time in Multisport, and that is the conversation that we're going to have with Roy here today. So, for the folks that don't know you, Roy, can you talk a little bit about yourself, um, how long you've been a triathlete? Uh, yeah, let's just start there. Okay, great. I uh, hope everyone is doing well uh, during these uh, hard times of no training, only specific training. Right. Um, my name is Roy. Uh, I like to go by my last name, which is James. Um, you will understand that uh, towards the end. Um, I'm originally from the Silk City. That's Addison, New Jersey. And then- Never uh, knew that. <laughs> Silk City. Yeah, I mean, it was the beginning. I mean, it was, it was the place of the, of the cult. Well, I don't know what that's in the military, right? Uh, so, <laughs> no, that's a drink. Never mind. <laughs> Silk City. Patterson, if you ever seen the movie on me, Fair East Side, I grew up around the corner. Um, then I moved and transitioned to Delaware, and from Delaware, I'm now here in the district. Cool. How long have you been in uh, DC? I've been in DC, going on two years now. All right. And what what brought you to the district? Work. Work. <laughs> like many of us. Uh, yeah, I came in DC for work um, and some other things. Uh, I guess what 2017, so just a little bit before you. Um, so thinking about uh, perfect time most sport. Obviously, we're talking about triathlons. So can you talk about how long you've been doing triathlons? What got you into the sport? Right. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. How long? Uh, let's say I've been in the sport of triathlon going on four years now. Um, I started cycling back in 2015, and um, I forgot the question. Yeah, and what, what initially got you into the sport? Oh, what got me into the sport? So, um, originally when I was back in Delaware, uh, this guy that I was running with, um, part of Black Men Run, um, he introduced me to another guy who was in, into triathlon, and that's how I got started. Okay. Um, and I've been in triathlon ever since. All right, cool, cool. So what was... A lot of people that get into the sport, and you don't have to be one of these people, but a lot of folks, they come in with a background of swimming, they come in with a background of biking, and are running. Like, what was your background before getting, putting all three together? My first sport as a child was swimming. So, um, swimming, <laughs> yeah, swimming. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, no, no, I'm glad you, 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 you pointed to that skin, that very <laughs> melanated skin. <laughs> <Nah. laughs> but uh, uh, a lot of POC folks, and especially black folks, they don't really have a swimming background. So mm -hmm. when did you start swimming, and how did you get into the sport of swimming? Uh, so this is going to start off uh, as a tragedy. 
semi tragedy. But it's gonna end in a hey, story. Perfect time for one story. We talk about vulnerable conver- we have vulnerable conversations and we like let's hear that tragedy. Okay. <laughs> uh let's see. Okay. Um you got tissues already? No, <laughs> no, no, no. Alright, um I was about six years old mm-hmm. and my dad he used to think of fishing all the time. So uh every day after school, once he finished your homework, he'd take you to the Hudson River. Oh, wow. So um we had to, we grabbed the fishing rods that day and we grabbed the boat and we went on the water. Now, the incident I believe occurred under the trapping zebra. My mom, she said that it happened under the George Washington Bridge. I'm unsure. But um my dad pulled out an anchor uh to keep the boat still and, and the boat started spinning slowly and then um I went down. Thank goodness for life preservers. Yeah. Um I came back up, he pumped water out my chest and then a guy on a jet ski, he came and um Brought me to the shore while my dad was still out there. Mm-hmm. Um, then my mom told me, you have to learn how to swim. Right. So I joined the local Boys and Girls Club, and I think that's where the tragedy occurred. Because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> things happen for a reason, right? I mean, that was the cause. This is the fact. So right. um, the tragedy happened at the Boys and Girls Club because me trying to swim in that water, the only thing I could think about was the Hudson. But after getting one-on-one teachings from the instructor, um, I then got from the three feet to the eight feet, and then from eight feet, I was on the Boys and Girls Club swim team, and that's, awesome. that's, that's how I started. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, definitely a round of applause for that, and uh, if you're watching, make sure you throw some hearts up, that's definitely it's a, it's something to love, so, uh, <laughs> that was great. Uh, <laughs> So now, um, a, again, when we think about Perfect Time and Multisport and what we're trying to build as a company, um, we have the vlog, the podcast, which is what you're tuning into, whether you're on Instagram Live at Perfect Time and Multisport or you are tuning in through the podcast. Um, but also under that umbrella of PTM, um, I just gave us an acronym, but under that umbrella of PTM, we have the coaching services. So. Think about coaching. How long have you been coaching? What are your specialties and coaching? So I've been coaching uh, since 2015. Um, coaching what? I, I, I'm a son coach. Okay. <laughs> um, it all started, again, I have so many freaking stories. Um, <laughs> tell stories. <laughs> I think so, it started out at the YMCA um, in Delaware. Okay. Um, there was a lady in, in the lane next to me uh, teaching this guy who was going to Marine Boot Camp. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, she was like, hey, I don't want to bother you, but um, can we see you swim again? So I did the swim. Came back and she was like, do you teach? And I said, no, no, no I, I, I don't teach. She was like, um, come stop by my office. I'm the aquatics director. And I was like, all right. Yeah. Next thing you know, um, I'm on her staff and started coaching okay. under her. And that's when I got, um, I wanted to get more involved in coaching because it it became something that I truly loved helping people. Helping people learn how to swim, which is a basic life skill that I think everybody should learn. Right. Um, so I got uh, certified under US Masters. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And I uh, also know that you're going to be uh, being the quote unquote head coach and taking a lead. I say quote unquote because uh, I, I didn't know how I wanted to phrase this, but you're really going to be taking the lead on all of our coaching services for Perfect Time and Multisport. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing that we're a triathlon space, how long have you been a triathlon coach? Uh, I've been a triathlon coach, well, let's just say this. I've been teaching triathlon, but I became certified this year. Okay. Um, so with that, I only have a little bit of experience just yeah. with that title of yeah. triathlon coach, but now that I'm here, I'm here, I'm ready okay. to work. All right, no, 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 I'm here for it. So, and so how long, when would, do you remember what your your first race was in triathlon? Yes, oh my God, I did, I think I did every rookie mistake. Like right. every rookie mistake. Yeah. Do we have time? Okay, okay. We got so, time. <laughs> another story, right? So, um, the guy I was training with, he was like, hey, do you have a wetsuit? I said, no, I have a wetsuit. Mm-hmm. He was like, Hmm. If you haven't trained with a wetsuit, don't use a wetsuit. I said, but you're going to have a wetsuit. They're going to have a wetsuit. I want a wetsuit. Oh, he was like, all right, um, you're going to hurt yourself if you train and you don't train with a wetsuit, but you're going to put a, a wetsuit on race day. Right. So I was like, nothing new on race day. <laughs> nothing new on race day, please. So I went to the scuba diving shop. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> went to the scuba diving shop. Uh, 
And I said, hey, I'm doing triathlon and um, I want to run a wetsuit. He was like, we don't rent wetsuits here, but because you are affiliated with this group over here, I'm going to let you borrow it, just bring it back to me. So I was like, okay. I'm looking at everybody's wetsuit on a race day. They don't have this type of stuff that's on my wetsuit. <laughs> I did not know this story. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, scuba, I went to a scuba dive shop, right? Yeah. So they had the, the scuba dive knee pads and, mm -hmm. and the elbow pads, and then it was a full wetsuit, not sleeveless. And this was. A very hot day in Lums Pond, Delaware. Wow. It, let's just say a swim that's supposed to take about 10 minutes took me about 22 minutes and hyperventilated. I unzipped my wetsuit. I was struggling getting out of the water. It was just a bad day. Um, but I improved on my bike. Um, that was one of the fastest, at that time, that was one of the fastest uh, bike. Bike uh, split. Bike. <laughs> <clears throat> bike splits that I had, and then um, the run, I crushed it. Yeah. It was it was too easy. It was two mile. Okay. All right. Cool. 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 So, how did you like? What, what did you take from that, and how did you apply um, some best practices going forward? Well, um, there's a lot of things that uh, you're not told when you're first entering the sport, right. and people just think, "Hey, I can swim. I can right. bike. I can run." let me just go ahead and do a triathlon but there's so much more there's there's technique driven uh things that you have to do when you're training i mean swimming is one of them that, i mean that's that's my expertise but swimming is one of those things that you can damage yourself and cause yourself permanent injury if you continue to do what you do mm -hmm. um cycling how to be more methodical and efficient i think the term efficient should be used by every triathlete efficiency right. to be efficient and then nutrition my gosh uh, it's like the first first part of the triathlon that people don't really uh, uh they're not really mindful of. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So from that race, I took. I uh, I need to uh, be more hydrated. Right. Um. I need to do a sweat test. Haven't done one of those yet, but uh, I figured you know the more I sweat, the more I need to hydrate. Water and electrolytes. Yeah. Um. Cycling again, be more more efficient on a bike and. Swimming, just re refining your technique, and I did better each race after that. So I know about how you got it. What was your, you know, entry to triathlon, which is swimming? Um, I heard hear about the first race, but taking a little step back in between those two uh, spaces, how did you learn about the sport, right? Because a lot of folks, especially POC folks, we don't know anything about triathlon. How did you initially learn about the sport of triathlon? Uh, so that story, another story. Um, it's, it's actually, it's, it's, I'm gonna fold like two or three stories into one. It's probably gonna be big, but oh, yeah, be here for it. All right. So, um, I learned about triathlon. Let me go to the beginning. Back from my last appointment, uh, well, my very first appointment. Mm -hmm. um, I came home. I was two fifteen solid. Uh, I thought I can, you know, lift the world. And then. Um, and not being medically diagnosed, but understanding the symptoms and understanding, you know, what depression is, mm. I believe that's what overcame me. And um, I went from 215 to 260. I mean, for my lunch and dinner, I had Big Macs and, and fish fillet sandwiches, you know, extra mac sauce and, and uh, extra value meal. I mean, that, that, that was it for me because I, mean, I can't do it no other way. So. <laughs> it's, it's good, but... Um, after coming home and, and trying to get settled, uh, going to 260, didn't realize it until I, I went on a run. Um, I'm used to, you know, at that time, averaging 7.45 to 8.30, you know, fast, slow, tempo. Right. And then um, I ran a 9.45, and I was like, what, what is going on here? Like, this isn't me. Now, in my head, I still saw the 215, but I did not see the 260. Until mm -hmm. I looked in the mirror, and I was like, wow. So, um... I during that time I had a PT test that I, I had to get ready for. Um, I got on the the program because um, I had to get taped. And what do you mean by getting taped? So to get taped in the military, mm -hmm. you you tape your waist. I mean, well, take take a measuring tape. They measure your waist, they measure your neck, and then your neck has to be half your waist. If not, you have to join the big boys program. Um, that's the unofficial term for it. Um, mm -hmm. But then. They, they send you to a nutritionist and you get healthy, basically. 
Um, I didn't want to get on that because I knew what it takes to get there. Right. Uh, so I um, lost the weight. I had a month to, to get it right, so I lost the weight. Then got on a program, but then I joined um, this team out of New York called Lean Strong Fast, and um, okay. he put he, he put us on a program for us to lose weight. It was a men's group and it was a female's group. And we had to lose weight each week, and those who lost the least amount of weight, they got out, but they still had to report their numbers to the competition. Mm -hmm. And um, after that is when I, I went from 260 to 230, and then I ran my first full marathon in Toronto. Okay. All right. Uh, what year was that? Uh, that was 2016. I ran the, the Good Life Marathon mm -hmm. in Toronto. So thinking about that that space that you were in, right? You come home, you have the motivating factor to to lose this weight, right? Uh, but what were some things you learned along the way, and do you feel like that was a, a good time to be in that space? Was there any lessons learned through that? There, there was a lot of lessons learned. Um, I think both professionally and um, individually, or mm -hmm. unprofessionally. Uh, in, in my in my private life, so personal and professional. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't want to be all technical. Either, but, um, <laughs> but um, professionally, as an officer in the military, uh, you have soldiers that look up to you, and you want to be the leader that you never had, or you want to emulate a leader that you knew and just be better than them. And uh, I wanted my soldiers to to really improve and to really be better than I. And right. you know, being a company, being a previous company commander, I mean. Push your soldiers over the limit to see their true value of themselves. It's, it's phenomenal. And this is all through PT. Because you know the National Guard and being a reservist, you do PT, what, one week out of a month, two weeks yeah. out of a year, you know? Um, so people don't hone that. Um, but that's your, your, your second question. Yeah, yeah. So what were the lessons learned? Oh, lessons you learned. Through that space? So, as you went as you went through that uh, difficult time. Lessons learned um, mentally, you know, um, health as well. Um, you know, if you if you don't take care of yourself, one, nobody else is going to take care of you. Two, you know, you will have so many symptoms and so many things that can be avoided. Um, and and I think that was probably the best one, the yeah. the most important one for me at least. Yeah, yeah. Again, as as we think about the foundation of the stories we're trying to tell, it's like let's hear about that zero to you know zero to twenty. Um, it's great. We, a lot of times we'll, we'll hear people say, yeah, I passed that PT test, but what got you motivated to keep training for that test, right? What got you motivated to make sure you were uh, prepared? Um, those are the stories that we want to make sure we're telling because um, everybody here is the 80 to 100. We all are here to success, but when you're at 260, how did you, how did you, how did you get to 259, mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. the important parts and the important stories that we really want to tell. Um, so definitely appreciate you sharing that. Um, so taking a step back and going into coaching mode, and if anybody has any questions as we're having this conversation, feel free to put it in our uh, put it in the chat. Uh, and our producer Daniela, she'll make sure she gets us the questions <laughs> from the iPad because we out here. No, <laughs> no, but uh, make sure you ask any questions. Um, but as you think about. Uh, Coaching, especially swimming, what are some difficulties uh, around coaching that you can think about? And to give a little bit more context, when we think about uh, triathlon and not really being a diverse sport, we know that there's barriers to entry. As a person that didn't have that barrier to entry, mm -hmm. how do you see as a coach helping people get through uh, that barrier, mm -hmm. whether it's some things you have in your mind or, and are some things that you actually know from your experience. So um, I could tell you a few challenges. Uh, I'm gonna go with people of color first. Um, a few of the challenges that I see is that uh, men are afraid to get into the water, mm -hmm. females it's easier for them to float, and they don't like to get their hair red. Um, <laughs> and, and men, men, I mean, you, you can look at scientific data and you can see you know, men are more dense uh, it doesn't take away the notion that men, uh, it's hard for them to float. Um, I do find uh, a lot of challenges in getting men to float, but um, that's still not all. We don't um, have patience, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. Um, in terms of triathlon swimming and um, 
advise pool swimming. Uh, it's two different techniques. Uh, open water, where most triathlons take place, uh, you have to think about current, you have to think about um, waves, you have to think about you know, arm placement, hand placement. You can't see in the water. Whereas in the pool, you got that blue line, and mm -hmm. you, you swim with a whole different technique, you know, high elbow and open water, you know, and remediating your strokes. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different techniques to do that. Um, but those are like some of the challenges that I see. You know, because I mean, when you're training in the pool, you have the wall, you have the line, you can see, um, you don't have to spot a buoy, mm -hmm. look up, and you know, put string on your neck. Mm -hmm. um, so, those are different challenges, but to get people into that, um, I'm a pretty much hands on type of coach when it comes to swimming. Mm -hmm. So, you know, video analysis, you know, showing you where your arm placement, where your hand placement is, you know, dropping your elbow, bringing up the high elbow, you know, um, spotting the buoy. Um, I go out there with you. I swim mm -hmm. with you. I, I train with you. Um, and then, you know, I do my own training because I, I still race. Yeah. So that's a really, I, I wasn't thinking about this question, but that's a, I'm glad you brought that up. As we think about Perfect Time Monthly Sport and as we uh, continue to build this community, what community are you hoping to build for not only people of color? Obviously, we're here. We want to make sure we highlight the people of color. Uh, but... For triathletes as a whole, what kind of community do you want to make sure we're building uh, for the folks listening and watching? Uh, more of a cohesive, and, and these perfect times, right? Um, team cohesion, uh, multi-sport cohesion. Right. Um, there's, there's so many things I have. I have, you know, I have so many thoughts in my head right now. Yeah. yeah. So basically, they just need to stay, 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 stay around and trust us. <laughs> we, we have a question um, from Gabby. She yeah. asks, how did you choose the best training plan for you? So that will come, well, at least for me, um, that's a, a conversation that you have with a coach. Now, um, Gabby, if you're speaking of, hey, I know how to swim, I know how to cycle, I know how to run, what is the best plan that I can choose online? Um, I will tell you, it's, it's a challenge because you don't know if you're doing the right technique, right? right? But let's just say, I'm speaking to an everyday person here, just like myself, you wanna find a plan that fits around your work schedule. You know, um, I, I don't wanna use COVID times or quarantine times for you to choose a plan and you have all the time in the world. That's you, you need to choose a plan that fits in your work schedule. Let's say you work 40 hours a week, right? And you, you want to be able to train at least 20 hours. So that's like two hours, two to three hours after work. Can you fit that in your schedule? And to have a coach, I mean, he can build that plan for you. Or she. Or she. Um, listen, I, I'm all inclusive here. Dude. So <laughs> um, I think that's how you should choose the, the best plan for you. Right, right. So as you think about building the the coaching program through Perfect Time and Multisport, uh, like what kind of how what kind of communication style do you hope to have not only from with me as a coach under you um, in your programs, but also yourself? Mm -hmm. Or is it going to be like really hands on as you're mentioning? Can folks reach out to you? It's going to be those once a week, once a month kind of communication. Like, what are some of your thoughts around? what you're trying to build as a coach and the communication you want to have with your athletes. Well, if you have, uh, if you build a plan or receive a plan from Perfect Time or Multisport, I mean, you're going to have access to me every day. Um, now, each plan has its... I'm just sorry, my plan. I ain't doing that. <laughs> each, each plan has its, its own tailor-made uh, functionality. So, um, you can reach me on social media. Uh, that will soon come. And you can reach me um, through email and again through perfect timing because we're, we're always here. Right, right. Okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. So, think, do, do we have any more questions? So, well, again, definitely appreciate, you know, just having this conversation. As, as I said, as we try to continue to build, um, we want this platform, this program, and these stories that we're telling to be. Um, I wanted to take that step back to have this conversation with Roy. Um, 
as well, I'm sorry, with James, uh, <laughs> so you all can not only learn more about me, uh, but learn more about him and learn more about the, the people and the co-founders that you're going to be working with, right? So again, make sure you're tuning in weekly. Uh, make sure you're following us on social media. Um, as we have events, we're going to be posting those. Uh, sometimes it's going to be some low-key events, especially during these COVID times. So definitely feel free to slide in our DM so you can learn about what we have going on. And then as things start to open up a bit more, um, not only here in D.C., uh, but also in Philly, you know, L.A., Miami, uh, wherever we go, we're taking our brand and our community with us. So um, let us know where you're at. Right. Uh, I'm sure there are only a few uh, limited audience with this. Right. Right. Today. But as we continue to grow this, there's going to be many more people uh, following it along, following along. So. Let us know where you're at. Let us know if you have a story that you want us to sell. Let us know if you need some coaching services. Although we're here in D.C. and we do want to make sure we have our primary coaching services and our athletes here in, in the district, we recognize that we are a, you know, a national, international community. So we will be able to provide services and, and tell your story and uh, help you with those with your athletic journey. So. Continue to follow along, continue to see what we have going on, and uh, continue to just be use us as a great resource because um, that's what we're here to do and bring this community of athletes and try to place together. So, before I, is, is there anything else you want to add? Or? No, uh, but during this COVID time, I said no, but I said but, right? <laughs> just like a man. Comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, seriously, I'm not. I'm on a serious note, um, during this, this quarantine time, make sure you're still maintaining your fitness, um, yeah. push-ups, home workouts, um, running, cycling, and uh, continue to take your health seriously. I mean, that's uh, right. we only got one life to live, so let's live it. All right. So before before we wrap up, I do want to ask one question, because uh, something that I want to ask everybody. So if you're watching this, you're like, what the hell is about to ask? No. If you, one thing that I want to ask everybody that joins this uh, these conversations, if you had to, if you had to, uh, what is it? Marry, date one, marry, no, I'm sorry. Marry one, kill one, and kiss one. Because I don't know who's going to be watching. <laughs> Which one would it be? Swim, bike, or one? Kiss one, marry one, kill one. I like it. You first. Oh, wait, you want me to answer that? Yeah. Oh, it's you. You nice. I'm the you. Okay. Nice. Oh, I'm All right. only the guest. But y'all can answer too. I'm curious. Kiss I'll one, go. marry one, kill one. Which I'll, one would it be? Like uh, in particular room. Oh. I will marry the swim. I will kiss the bike. And I will kill the run. That's facts. <laughs> That's definitely facts. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, again, thank you. I appreciate that. Make sure you all tune in uh, next week uh, around the same time. Stay again. Follow us. Perfect time in multi sport. Follow me personally. Ship happens two one five. That's S H I P P happens two one five. And follow Roy at R J dot try. I cannot talk to save my life. Okay. That's R J dot try. R J dot try. Ship happens two one five. Perfect time in multi sport. Um, and we're going to keep this keep this keep these conversations going. Gabby um, says oh, she would kill the swim, marry the bike, and kiss the run. Oh All man, right. so she's a woman. All right, she's a woman. There you go. <laughs> All right, again, thank you everybody that's tuning in. Whether you're tuning in live, you're listening on the podcast that we're going to be uh, posting up, or if you're watching this uh, at a later date. All right, appreciate y'all. Peace. Bye, guys. <laughs>